Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, to today's stream where I have an esteemed guest and a good friend of mine that shall be known as Bowtide Passport. So we're going to be talking about some passport bros type situations, living abroad topics, and intercultural considerations. Uh, Bowtide is also a fellow ex expat such as myself, lives here in Mexico City, so I know him personally, but... <laughs> For the time being, he shall remain anonymous. So, BT or Bowtie, wh what do you want people to call you? I mean, we'll, we'll go with Bowtie. Bowtie is great for the show. All right. So, you're mentioning the pre-show that there's some Bowtie type communities in the Twitter sphere. I'm unfamiliar with that term. So, where does the Bowtie come from in the Bowtie passport? So, it's a long story short. It's spring from a guy, a Bowtie bull that used to have a different article or a different website under a different name. And it's, I, I call it more of a decentralized group of people that all have some sort of skill or expertise. Some people sell courses, there's, you know, financial information. There's a, a, a bow tie dentist that, you know, has a, a toothpaste product. There's like a lot of different brands. And typically the information is good. People interact with you. If the information is bad, that person may just like disappear after a while. So it's kind of like a self-governing community, I'd say. Yeah, that's super cool. I've never heard of that. So I know I've I've met you through some of the communities of guys that live active lifestyles down here that are into the dating topics. Um, I see it a lot of events out and about. So maybe let's go through and tell people how you made it down to Mexico. Let's give your uh, your origin story here. Or just, uh, I, I'll put it in the front. I know you've had a podcast on this before that mm -hmm. I do hate the Passport Bro title. I made the mistake. Yeah, I, I do too. Chose like, I chose Bowtie Passport because I thought it was a good name and I've traveled to a lot of places. I didn't really know that there's a whole passport bro community at the time. So I kind of get lumped into them by also talking about the topics I talk about. But I don't consider myself part of the community. People read my posts and see that I like hate on them relatively often. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the original question. Uh -huh. but, yeah, yeah, original, let's see your like origin story I and I have a follow up on that origin of story is uh, i guess how how far back should i go yeah it was like a cold Mexico wednesday afternoon <laughs> yeah i was born on such and such date um yeah maybe talk about some of your world travels because i know um in the sake of keeping you anonymous uh feel free to divulge as much or as little information as possible but i know you have quite the extensive travel history prior to even moving to mexico so feel free to comment oh, yeah. on that or I'd say, I mean, it's already known I was formerly an army officer, uh, but before even then, I had lived in Germany. I studied the majority of my time in Germany, uh, kind of got bored of Germans. I wanted to work in finance. So <laughs> for whatever reason, I felt like German and, and German banks were like the top place to go. Turned out I just hated Germany and ended up moving to Hungary for a while. Um, from Hungary, I went the commission route as an army officer, ended up going to Korea. Uh, bounced into a couple other places I won't talk about from there. Eventually made it back to the States at some point and kind of like hopped out of the military around that period. And I had a bunch of friends who were living in Mexico. A good friend of mine I'd met in Hungary. He was living here. Uh, another friend of mine from uh, California, he was opening up a, like a venue down here in Mexico. And I said, hey, I'll, I'll come down and visit you guys. Plan to stay for two weeks and two weeks turned into a month. And I said, you know what? I'm all in. I would just apply for residency before anybody else does. And I've been here ever since for a little over three years. Yeah. So I have a couple of questions for you here. So uh, stationed in K-Town, I'm assuming that's, that's Korea. You mentioned that, that you spent some time there. Let's see. Military guys, TDY or stationed abroad are the original trailblazers. Yeah, we have quite a few here. Bow ties. And then I did want to get on this topic real quick. So passport bros just means modern expat because expats aren't monger sex tourists. So I get, I don't really get called a passport. Uh, yeah. So let's see. K, K Town in Germany. Yeah. Were you, were you uh, stationed in K Town then? I don't even know. No, I was. actually had nothing to do with the military when I was in Germany. I went to school in the country and just lived around different cities. People were confused. They assumed that, like maybe he's military, but I was, had no association with the military. Yeah, at that at that point. So, getting back on the on this passport bros topic. So, I'm kind of like you. I don't really like the term passport bros for me per se. I mean, I I studied abroad here in Mexico almost 20 years ago. So even before Google was a thing, I was already down here. Smartphones weren't out yet. We still had the T9 text keyboards, the old Nokia's with the 
the snake game on there that I played incessantly and those things you know you see the memes of battery life last forever so i i was down here a long time ago but what is your take on the passport bro thing would you you already mentioned you don't consider yourself a passport bro would you just call yourself an expat or a digital nomad um i think i refer to myself more of an expat since I, i'm like you I'm, I'm legal i have a residency i'm based down here my full-time life is down here and i consider this home now i mean yeah i, I guess like passport either for uh, expat would be the best word. I wouldn't say I'm a digital nomad. I I don't constantly travel around, so I'm not nomading. I I did that for a few I, years, so I would I would have called myself a digital nomad at that point in my life. But yeah, no, I'm I'm established here now. I'm set in. So I I use the term like expat. I guess would be the best. I know some people will also hate on that word, but uh, it is what it is. Immigrant. I mean, maybe you could classify as immigrant since. We do have residency here. We're part of the legal system. I, We're not just illegally. I call myself a reverse Mexican sometimes, to which that usually gets a, a little bit of laughter down here. I just tell people I'm Mexican. Yeah, if I mean, I have a Mexican it, ID. They, yeah, yeah, I have an ID. They question it, like, I'll just talk to them in Spanish, and, and everybody throws, a, like, it's not about where you're born. Being Mexican is where your heart is. And then everybody's like, oh, he knows the game. Yep. Oh, that's definitely a good line. So in, in terms of, um, I'm kind of in the same vein as you, how do you des describe or define a passport, bro? Because I know there's a lot of talk in the space. I've never come across a clearly agreed upon definition yet. So I, I'm curious to see what your take would be in terms of that term, passport bros. So I'll essentially paraphrase a, a tweet that I wrote where the way that I view passport bros are typically they're people, the guys are going to find quote, good women, Val high value people, things like that. But the majority of them, I mean, I've joined some of their forums to see what they talk about. The majority of them really are trying to find the cheapest place for, for like pay for play and things like that. Um, you, you know, any actionable information, I, I've noticed that you try to give passport bros, they're not really interested. Um, I also put the category, like a lot of them are on the lower income side. So they're looking for oh, the okay. best deal, like overall. And the majority of my like tweets and blog posts are not really marketed towards somebody looking for the budget. I, I talk about Mexico City a lot in that aspect. Like, this is not a, a cheap city mm -hmm. if you really want to live. No, well. no, it's not. And you know they typically aren't learning the language, things like that. So I've, I've also got like a, a article that I wrote and say that the tiers of people and like often they're just finding, you know, the the barrio chicks. And, you know, they're going through Google Translate to try to. Yep have conversations and and that kind of just looks at the it just seems like low value to me so i don't really want to associate with with those guys i've often you know even if you pop on the passport bros twitter page and whatnot it's mainly just them complaining about women complaining about the west and i'm more than mindset is like i have no idea what's happening in america like i don't know anything about the election i don't know what's happening isn't that you don't nice say it to me specifically like i have no idea like i'm all in on mexico that's all i know yeah, I, I fall I fall in the same camp as you in terms of I I live down here full time. The, you know, this is my life, this is my home. And in terms of like any of the low value stuff, I, I know what you're talking about. I've I've gone to um last time I was in Cancun, ran into a kid. It was an adults only resort, so a lot of fun, a lot of activities. I was, I was there with my brother. We were having so much fun that we, we hardly even saw each other the whole time. Fun in like terms of the, the dating, I guess, hookup aspect. And we came across this kid. He was a Mexican-American kid from LA um, at the bar. And he was asking, hey, do you, do, do, you know, uh, you know, do you know where to get the good girls in terms of like pay for play? Oh, do you go into town? Do you go here? I was like, dude, I don't even know. Like, look around. There's so many girls here at this resort. And they're all here to have fun. Like, what do you? why is that even on the top of your mind? And um, I realized, I talked to my brother afterwards for a bit, that I guess that that's how a lot of guys think in terms of, okay, that is the only option that I guess the easy option. But for me, and I saw you out Saturday too, running game two. Uh, we had an event um, this last weekend. For me, it's it would be harder to go about that route than it would just to go out and live the awesome, fun, active lifestyle I already live. And then you just kind of come across girls organically. It's really not too terribly tough. But you did mention, and I fall also into this camp to where I speak Spanish. And I know you speak Spanish. We go out with girls together and we speak Spanish to them. And 
I get a lot of pushback from guys saying that, oh, it's not necessary. And they say, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I have yet to meet a guy that gets results similar to those that I do because I speak the language and I know the lay of the land and um, I involve myself in the culture. And again, I live here full time and I know that I know that you fall into that camp too. So I'd be, I'd be curious to get your take on, on that comment, that lengthy comment. I mean, I, I work with, uh, or I'm partnered with two other Spanish teachers, like my personal Spanish teacher, and then another woman, Gabby, that does uh, Spanish language. And we go back and forth on like, yes, yeah, Spanish is probably not 100% essential, but if you want to live a certain lifestyle, it becomes essential. Like, let's say if you just want to go around, you know, Condesa or, you know, Parque Mexico areas like that, you can get away with speaking Spanish, but you slowly like fall out of favor where people are going to get tired of having to speak English to you. You're not going to be invited to things that are, you know, outside of that foreigner range. And I mean, you could say, you know, look at the places that we've gone to. Typically we are one of the few non Mexican people yes. there. There are very few foreigners there. People might speak decent English sometimes and often these are like upper class Mexicans that they're like, Hey, you're in my country mm -hmm. at this point you have to speak Spanish. It's not that I can't speak Spanish, but like, why would I put in that extra effort? And that's where there's like yep. a, a big gap between the foreigners that stick to just the foreign circle and only girls that speak English or Google Translate and the people that learn the language and start moving into other parts of society where they're in like upper class, upper middle class areas of town versus the tourist town or, you know, the, the, the poor side of wherever they're going. Yeah, I definitely understand that. And in and, and a lot of countries, not even Mexico, for upper middle class, it is required to have a degree of English proficiency to get a university degree or to get any sort of, um, I guess, prominency in your professional life. There is a direct correlation between, okay, income level and the, the English proficiency. But as you mentioned, most of these guys, when we go out, we speak in Spanish online. And then maybe once they get a couple beers, then they'll start making some jokes in English or, they, or they'll, they'll try in English. But most of them, they give zero Fs whether you speak Spanish or not. It's like you said, we're in their country and we speak Spanish here. And that's, and that's it. But I do meet, again, a lot of guys, a lot of foreign guys that don't really make an effort nor see the value in learning the, the language. And I always mention that language is just an extension of your internal operating system or the way you think. So yeah, learning Spanish is great on the surface level. But once you really get into the language, then you can start thinking like these people. Now you're you're tapped into the cultural collective unconsciousness and you're you're a part of where you're living and it's such a much more deeper enriching experience when you are able to do that and, and again i scratch my head sometimes i don't understand why you would want to move to a country and not be able to speak the local language because when i came down here 20 years ago that was a big thing for me within a few months i was at it conversationally it probably took me a couple of years to get good at it to where i am now and I, i'd say i was actually probably better 20 years ago because I was one of the only foreigners on campus. We didn't speak English at all. So I'd go months without speaking English and I would just think in Spanish the whole time. Whereas now I can kind of toggle back and forth. But in terms of guys, and I'm just going to lay it out there. If you're going abroad anywhere, learn the local language because you will separate yourself from the other foreigner class and you will, you'll get a leg up on the competition. And you get to have experiences, uh, bow tied, as you mentioned, to where you get invited to things that other foreigners don't get invited to. I know a lot of events that you and I go to we're usually the only foreigners there. We'll, we'll, we'll mingle for a couple minutes and someone else will pull us aside. And then we, we kind of bump into each other a couple of times, but we are a part of the action. And again, I think that is just a much more enriching experience. Yeah. That's, that's, just, it's a, a joke within some of the, my friends also is like, how did your Twitter grow so quickly? Like so fast. And I was like, I, I, I think that it's partially because me learning the language where you're touching on the mindset is like learning the language allows you to kind of tap into the mindset of the people and understand how they do things or, you know, interact in, in behind the scenes. And a lot of the takes that I have are things that the average foreigner has no idea that's happening or doesn't really conceptualize because they're not understanding the backstory behind it. So me presenting the backstory, you know, uh, the thought like in English, but with a Spanish thought or a Mexican thought process behind it, isn't something that really gets presented on Twitter very often. Of course, I do troll a lot, but sometimes it's in depth. And, and occasionally I think that I might say something on Twitter that's like so specific to somebody that have, have had to have been living here for a while that some of the followers don't even understand exactly what I'm talking about. 
I know Spanish, Spanish is fun too. So I, I play, um, I, I play music as a hobby. So I treat it like just, just like learn a new, in, in a new instrument. Or if you get into like acting or anything like that, it's essentially just creating a new role for yourself and stepping into that new role. And there's different features of the language where you activate these systems too within yourself. So Spanish is a much more emotive language. It's a beautiful language. It's a musical language. It has rhythm, meter, and time. So I've found that learning Spanish quickly has helped me with my music too, and vice versa. It's, it kind of uses that same part of the brain. And Interesting. Uh, I've got, got a couple of comments here. Yeah, for because I, I know a lot of people get self-conscious, and I have, you know, I'll, I'll date girls. I'll have buddies here where, hey, you know, they'll, they'll ask me, I need some help with my English. And I'll just tell them, like, yeah, you're just, you're just creating a new role for yourself. You're creating a character, you know? That, yeah, you're going to say things wrong. You might start off talking like a three-year-old, but everyone goes through that process, which for me, I, I enjoyed the process of learning the language. I, I found it quite fun. So again, don't quite understand why others don't share that sentiment. And here's a comment here. It's easier for weirdos that speak Spanish. I'd say that's definitely true. Also, you don't get taken advantage of as much. Um, and again, learning the language as a byproduct, you learn the culture and you kind of learn the lay of the land, the, the way things are done. So um, I went out with a gringo buddy this weekend at, at our table. And when the bartender came up, I let him know. I was like, hey, keep the tab open all night. Um, gave, him a, gave him a good tip and told him like, hey, you know, I'll be tipping you in cash throughout the night. Just keep an eye on the table. Make sure. And I broke down the rules. These girls are with us. They can drink. I was like, if other guys come over, bring it to me first. If people are ordering food, let me know. And And he was kind of just running table management or logistics for me, which was actually quite nice and then my my buddy was asking me he's like oh well you know how, how'd you set that up doesn't doesn't speak any spanish obviously yet and i told him i was like hey you know when you learn the lay of the land just kind of you gave the brief rundown when we when we took ownership of our table for that event just give the bartender the quick rundown real quick and then that ensures that my night is fun and stress-free and i can let go and relax and go mingle and go you know dance like an idiot or, or do whatever but for guys that don't know that, I mean, a lot of people run into a lot of surprises. Or, again, I, I can't imagine when you're in a group of people to where you're the only non-native language speaker, and they're all talking about you, they're joking, they're they're conversing or whatnot, and you're just kind of standing there like, like a little kid, or with the Google Translate pulling it out. And as you mentioned, Bowtie. Yeah, they might find it endearing at first, but eventually they'll start rolling their eyes and it gets really annoying really fast. And yeah, there's an you know, interesting comment along. from a. Uh... There's a comment from yeah. Professor yeah, which Max, one? where he says, like, you know, they'll, they'll think it's cute, and then they'll think you're lazy or stupid. I have this oh, yeah, comment yeah. on yeah, this where, where I say, like, imagine if you're in the States and you decide to bring a girl from the trailer park to, like, a family meetup or something like that. Ooh, no matter that. how <laughs> hot she is, like, your family's going to be like, yo, you brought this trailer park girl, you know, or hood rat all of a sudden to the family dinner or things, things like that. Your entire family is going to look at you like negatively. Probably you will probably know I get a heart like you shouldn't have done that either. So now flip that to the Mexican side. You're trying to date a girl that is, you know, middle class for middle class Mexican, does well for herself. Her family does well for themselves. And you don't speak Spanish and you bring and she wants to bring you to meet her family at some point. Everybody in that conversation is going to speak Spanish. They're not going to cater to you because you don't speak Spanish in their country. They may say like, oh, he may be somebody in his hometown, but they're going to look at you and be like, you brought yeah, the care. trailer trash dude to the, the cookout. Like you, you, you brought a toddler. He can't even speak Spanish or Spanish is so bad that it's not worth having a conversation with him. You become the odd one out. And from her eyes where, you know, the family structure is much more ingrained in Mexico for, you know, uh, could you say pride, I guess, that she's going to take a negative standing in her own family by bringing somebody that doesn't speak Spanish around or bringing like the odd person. So that's that's an area where I say if you learn Spanish, now you can connect with the people of the upper middle class versus just the average person. And I mean, the, the Mexican, the Latin American middle class in general live significantly better than the upper class in America. So you're going to have way more fun options with these people than you would even in, in America. Yeah, I, th I think that's a fantastic point. I've, I've got a couple of comments here. So I'm in Guanajuato. We have tons of lazy gringos that even try to speak Spanish. Yeah, I agree. I haven't, I haven't been out there in a, in a bit, but I'll, uh, I'll drop me, hit me up on IG and I'll let you know when I'm back through there because I think I'm due for a Guanajuato trip. Um, Spanish language is so beautiful. The words are like the expanded form of music. Yeah, Spanish is musical. I, I, I absolutely love the language. Although a lot of native Spanish speakers speak it very, speak it very, very terribly too. I was in Los Angeles last week and 
you get a lot of like the ghetto kind of cholo type Mexicans. And I heard some just atrocious Spanish in the air in Los Angeles. But when you come down here, people don't speak like that. And I'm, I, I was actually spent a day with a, a girl from here in Mexico City. She, she's up working in L.A. So we spent the day together. And she know, she mentioned that, too. She's like, why do all the young Spanish speakers here speak it terribly and they curse a lot and they sound very ignorant? I'm like, oh, that's a that's a U.S. thing for whatever reason. Like the ghetto, low IQ, low culture is very prominent in the in the u.s and it, it is a, it is to a degree here too you'll see like ghetto reggaeton stars and stuff that you know ch chicks will be into but again they're usually just they're usually the lower class people so um that's one at thing to mention time, too yeah go for it at, at the same time like my theory on the reasoning behind that is you know on average the mexicans or latin americans in general that are coming to america typically aren't you know the top percent of their country so their families no. are typically a little bit lower educated also. So their families are going to move to an area that's probably also Latino, surrounded by lower educated Latinos. They may have built themselves up over that time, but like they're being taught Spanish from their parents, which might not have the back, same background. And then you also factor in that, you know, for a lot of Latinos in the States, especially the older generation, they were kind of taught, you know, be more American, like don't speak Spanish in public. So a lot of them didn't even teach their kids Spanish to begin with, or their kids kind of like picked up Spanish as a broken language. So when they start speaking Spanish, you know, as, as Americans, their Spanish is broken, you know, not very well educated sounding. And, and that reflects when they come to Mexico also, where some of the, the, the pochos, I guess you would say, don't really have say, great that's Spanish word, to, to, come to come to come to Mexico. And, and in some cases, you know, you have a conversation that turns out that you or I that learn Spanish, you know, by the book in school or, you know, with regular people end up speaking better Spanish than some people back in the States that that's their, you know, lineage. Yeah, I learned it in university down here years ago, and I didn't know at the time, but it turns out I went to a really good university, so I speak it at a at a higher, more academic wow. level. And I speak, I, I'm told I speak it very properly, so I, I had a girl here last night, and She's like, well, how, how long have you been in Mexico City? I'm like, oh, I've been here for almost three years. And I lived in Guadalajara for four years, uh, you know, almost 20 years ago. And then and then I always love when they ask you basic questions. She's like, oh, so do you understand pinche? Do you know what that means? I'm like, well, yeah, I've lived here for like seven years total in my life now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've come across that word. And then she asked, she's like, well, you, you don't speak that way. I was like, well, I don't speak that way in English. I, I don't speak like a low IQ piece of uneducated trash in English either. Um, the way you speak, regardless of what language you speak or where you're at in the world, that does have an effect on the way people treat you and on the experience you're going to have. So it's better. I, I say this, I say this too, in the U S um, guys that speak low level of English, don't do that. You're not doing yourself any favors. A lot of doors will open for you when you present yourself properly. Um, I have another comment here. The same guys who criticize Latinos in the States, the same guys that demand others speak English. Yeah, I get that one too. And I always tell people, you get a lot of people that, well, okay, passport bros, expat, digital nomads or whatever. Hey, I want to go live in Mexico or I want to, I want to live a lifestyle like you, or uh, you mentioned earlier, Bowtie, the, the predominant mindset of, oh, the women are terrible in the West. The West is doomed, but they can't quite get out of their city yet. Well, if you live in a major U S Metro, might as well learn Spanish because now you have access to a dating pool that none of the other, I guess, quote unquote, gringos have access to. You hear guys, um, they'll criticize shows like Fresh and Fit, and they say, oh, it's all these Miami 304s or Miami's a city on hard mode. No, it's not. Miami, New York, and Los Angeles are super easy if you're an American who speaks Spanish because now you have access to higher tier girls, and a lot of them, especially in Miami, they're from mi upper middle class and even higher class from some of these Latin American countries that have gone the socialist route. So um, so you get access to girls that they don't want to date the rappers. They don't want to date the podcasters or the, the whatever. So, um, I've met girls in Tinder with buddies sitting next to me in Miami. Like, Hey, we have a mansion. We have some exotic cars. We have a photographer. We have a buddy pulling up at the yacht for some of these, uh, meetups I did in previous groups that I was affiliated with in the space. And a lot of the, a lot of the best girls like, yeah, I'm not interested in any of that, but let me know when you're free. We can go get a coffee. We can go get a drink. I, 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 I actually want to get to know you. So, I have a great time in Miami, New York, Los Angeles, any any of those cities where they have a large Spanish speaking population. You don't even have to leave your own country. So um, another another point for yep. why you should uh, learn Spanish there. Yep, yep. I mean, I I say my Spanish story is, you know, one I feel like it might have been easier for me to learn Spanish because 
I also spoke, spoke German beforehand. So well, that one's tough, right? Having, having that education level, and I mean, it took me four years to get to the level of German as where it took me a, a year and some change to get to that same level in Spanish. Yeah. But learning another Spanish language and really having quickly. that foundation, you know, I, I took classes for maybe two to three hours a week for about a year. And then I enrolled in University of Mexico, took a, an intensive Spanish course there, like a 75 hour course there. And just from uh, you know living in Mexico and taking three hours a week, I was much better in the Spanish three core. I tested directly in the Spanish three and ended up much better conversationally than the majority of the class, but my grammar wasn't all the way perfect. So the teacher would always call that out. I'm like, I don't, we don't know how you learn Spanish the way you did. You sound more natural, but now we need to learn actual grammar. Yeah. Yeah, it was the so, same yeah, way. It took I me think about, a, I... I'd say, a year and two months is what it took me to get to level of Spanish three in, in the course. Yeah, I think when I came down here, within two or three months, I felt like I was okay conversationally. So I I, I memorized the five, there's, there used to be a book called the 501 Verbs of Spanish. Memorized just all the basic verbs, memorized how to conjugate all the verbs in the various tenses, but they don't use all the tenses here in Mexico. So the, the most common tenses, um, A, R, I, R, E, R ending verbs, uh, the most common irregular verbs like ir, like you just have to memorize that in the various tenses. But I, I spent just a couple of weeks just really writing out grammar tables, memorizing them, committing them to memory, then starting to train the ear. And then eventually, once you have more of the academic theory of it down, then you hear it all around you and you can make sense of it. And then you actually act out the language and that just reinforces it. So um, within a few months, I felt like I was conversational. By eight months, I think I could start dating or getting around. I, I can have like good conversations in eight months in the language. And after about month, I think 13 or so, I felt completely comfortable in the language. Like don't, don't even have to think, just whatever, and I can just yeah. spit it out. So, um, so really, another I mean, comment yeah. From, uh, say yeah, another comment see. from Professor Mex, that uh, every guy I know that speaks Spanish or speaks Spanish exactly like their girlfriends. I have a tweet on that too. Or I tell a girl, <laughs> That's funny. People are always like, oh, you know, just get a girlfriend, you'll learn Spanish. And I'm like, no, don't get a girlfriend and learn Spanish because you will end up talking like yeah. her. And, and I mean, oh, say, there's uh, so many slang. Yeah, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're guys. If I ever hear a guy say like Oli or, or Seep, I'm like, you know, two, Oli, I know exactly where you're, <laughs> Por I know fees. exactly how you yeah. learn Spanish. And I'm like, no, nah. like suck it oh, up, pay so for funny. a teacher, find a dude. Like I have the good recommendation is my Spanish teacher, uh, Marcelo. He also goes to the gym, he lifts. So I always recommend him, but learn Spanish from a guy and learn Spanish from a guy that also has like an education background. Because another aspect is when you do start getting into uh, like say upper or middle class upper people and they, they want to do any sort of business or just talk professionally you don't want to be the guy that learns spanish from your girlfriend and is talking like a valley girl but the spanish accent yep i was gonna, I was gonna mention that so when i was in guadalajara they used to call it fresa and it's the equivalent of a valley girl so you'll hear it's like bueno y vamos a ir al cine o sea y luego este margie me dijo que no hay pues no sé like it's val it's valley girl speak so uh, that's that doesn't sound good to the ear. Um, and a lot of the again, going back to like kind of the cholo comment, um, you'll get a lot of gringos that come down here and they want to speak the low class Spanish. So they'll be they'll be they'll yell stupid shit like obscenities. I'm like, bro, you don't even know how to introduce yourself or give your address or order food on the phone. Why are you yelling obscenities in public? Don't <laughs> fucking stand next to me. It's it, it's ridiculous. And a lot of gringos think that's really funny. Or they'll 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 say things that are. Again, obscene, I think, is the best word here. I'm just like, I don't, I don't say that out loud. Like, why, what, why are you doing that? They can look at you and tell that you don't know what you're talking about. So it's so kind of kind of same thing in English. I, I, I just dropped an F-bomb there. But uh, I use it for emphasis. But I typically don't swear too much in English unless it is for emphasis. And if I swear in Spanish, again, it's for emphasis or it's because I'm setting up a joke or something like that. But typically, yeah, speak higher levels of any language and you will get access to those higher level classes. And it, it, you, you also hear it down here. You, you'll hear people like kind of like the servant class down here to where they'll use very low level Spanish. Um, like my cleaning lady, for example, when she when she texts oh, yeah. me, I'll be sitting here with one of the girls or something. And they they always make fun of the way she texts because her spelling's terrible. Her grammar's terrible. Um, like I. Aiga in base they aga. That's that's a big one that you'll yeah. see with them, but they they literally don't know the difference. Yeah, my security guard is the same thing. I, for a while, I had to like send messages to my security guard send to other friends 
I'm like, yo, I have no idea what he's trying to say here. <laughs> and they're like, oh, he's, oh, yeah. you can just tell he's, he's like not the most educated and has bad like grammar in general. And I'm like, yo, my Spanish is bad. I have no idea what this guy's saying. Or you, you'll see crazy he's, spelling he's a too. Of like, words now. Yeah, you'll see terrible spelling too. And you're like, it's a phonetic language. Every letter has a sound associated with it. There's no, it's not really any silent ones. Okay, yeah, the double L gets like, like that's two letters and gets like kind of like the English equivalency of a Y, but pre pretty much in like, yeah, the H, you, you kind of, my, my vocal coach taught me to kind of hit like a G from the back of the throat, but it's real subtle. So, but most of the time, every letter you see, it is, it is pronounced. So I, I, I never understood why the, uh, why the, uh, the the spelling so off there? Um, let's see. Ooh, we yeah we got some chat lighting up. So salute, fellas. Hey, 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 Marcos. All right, professor is dropping some knowledge. Yeah, guys. Yeah, feel free to participate in the in the chat here. Uh, ask any questions. Leave any comments. Um, I suppose at some point, if we, if we want someone to get up here, we we can do that, or we can do that on a future stream too. Now that uh, we're we're starting to get a little more participation here. Um, here, let's see. These guys are definitely on top. These guys have been here a minute. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's like anywhere you live. So when I first came here to Mexico City, it took me a bit to start to set up my social network to figure out where I wanted to live, to start to plant my seeds or my roots here, so to speak. But when you've been here for a while, um, and Bota, I don't know if this this is your experience, but I'm going on year, or no, I've already been here for three years. Um, once I hit about year three here, I realized that I get recognized when I go out now. Now, I, I, li I live in Polanco, so it's a... Uh, it's a nicer neighborhood, but it's a pretty small neighborhood. So people see you walking out and about. They see you at the gym. They see you shopping. They, and then they all kind of murmur. Uh, so the word gets around in terms of who you are. I think I, I hang out in more uh, closed type social groups. So I've gotten to the point where if they don't know me personally, they know of me, which is really cool because um, Bowtie, if, as you alluded to, they have stronger relationships, family relationships, social relationships cultural relationships. So it's really cool being brought into that to where, okay, like that, I'm actually now kind of a, a fixture in my, my local environment, which a lot of times in the U S I remember I've, I've lived in the U S for years to where you don't even know your neighbors half the time, which is crazy. I know all my neighbors. Yeah, I'm like this, me being an anonymous person on the internet, me being relatively low key. I'm just apparently famous in Mexico city. <laughs> it's happened on multiple occasions where, uh, some girl that I've never even met has taken a picture of me and then messaged me on Instagram and been like, uh -huh. Hey, I saw you at this restaurant. I'm like, why don't you just come and say hi? I've had that like, happen too. <laughs> I, I, no, I didn't say, I'm like, I, I told one girl, like, yo, this is kind of stalkerish. Like you now sent me two pictures of me, but we don't know each other or anything like that. Or just in general, like, you know, some of the events that I've gone to, Somebody occasionally yep. comes up. Can I take like, a oh, picture? I saw you at this event. Or, yeah, I can't take a picture. Like, I saw you at this event and stuff like that. So, yeah, after being here for a while, you, people recognize you. They they figure out you're not, you know, the foreigner that's only here for the three to six month visa time. Like, you actually live here. And that's that's something where uh, there's like a probably a gap where there's a lot of foreigners that come to Mexico City and then say that they can't make friends and they can't really build a social group. And I've said it from, you know, the point of view of the it's local easy and the to point make of friends view of myself. Here. Well, friendly. the thing is like, like one, uh, I am not really interested in meeting people until they've hit, you know, a year or so that they've been here because typically they're going to leave within a couple of months. You know, they either can't figure out the system, they can't learn Spanish, something happens or they go back home. They got to return to the office. And it's the same mm -hmm. with a lot of uh, Mexicans. They're like, you know, we've seen foreigners so often that I'm not really interested in making friends with majority of foreigners because why do I want to be friends with somebody for a couple of months and they leave? So once you've been here for a longer period of time, I've noticed that people that may have seen me, you know, a year ago are finally coming to talk to me because they're like, I've noticed yep. that you actually live here permanently. Like you're not just here for the tourist visa. And then I, they start talking and they're like, oh shit, yeah, this guy actually does know a lot about the country. Yeah, I've, I've I've found that to to happen too. It's, it's funny because we go to a lot of these these same types of events to where like, okay, can I take a picture? And then they'll tag you, and then the and then you'll have their friends hitting you up. But again, you'll you know any any time you know just by virtue of being foreigner, and especially in crowds where there's not a lot of foreigners, um, people will take your picture. They'll put you on video. They'll put you out there, and then other people start to see it, and you, and you create that momentum. And 
I've noticed that a lot of times, especially if you're more in the dating type thing, uh, meet a girl on a dating app, th they'll ask you, hey, how long are you here for? How long have you been in town? How long are you here for? Or sometimes they'll flat out ask, do you live here or are you just passing by? Are you a tourist? Are you on vacation? And that that could be seen as a slight objection. Some guys use the term like shit test or something like that. But really, as as you mentioned, it's just Am I actually going to create a relationship with you, or are you just are you just one of those party tourist type gringos looking to make a mess and have a quick good time and then head on back to to your homeland? And I, I was going to yeah. kind of bring it into this topic too. So we, we talked about the importance of learning Spanish, but I noticed that culturally, a lot of the gringos that come down here just their mannerisms are a bit off. They're kind of socially awkward or, or, or weird, and I'll see that um, this event on Saturday brought brought a couple of my buddies with me newer newer foreigners to mexico and and a lot of times and you get this too and i used to fall in this camp too you, you get a, a lot of guys follow my stuff because like the game or the dating type topics you'll see them out and it's like they're on a mission they're just game 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 talk to every girl get the number do this ta tactic and for me and, and i know you're like this too bow tied to where i show up i just know enough people and yeah i've dated plenty of girls at these events but i'm just cool with all of them to where they'll, they'll come over the table and they're like oh oh whatever, just a little small talk. They'll come over and start dancing. They'll take pictures and we'll, we'll go walk around together and present to other people. And a lot of the newer foreigners, they're still stuck in that either there, a lot of the places in the good neighborhoods, which I don't even go to anymore. You'll get a crowd of like 80% dudes, 20% chicks. It's just like the U S clutching the beers on their chest. They're real aggressive, kind of standoffish. It's like they have a chip on their shoulder and an agenda. And if I bring them to more of our kind of more curated or private events, it's the same thing. Either they're game, either they're, either they're on game mode, one hundred percent. Like, oh, gotta meet chicks, gotta meet chicks, gotta meet chicks. And whereas me, I was like, dude, just talk to everyone. Just be cool with everyone. Anyone comes by your table, you bump into anyone. Hey, you know, have some small talk, get the information, start building your social circle. But I, I'm curious if you've noticed that, um, and if so, to what degree or, or what your take is on that. Um, it's a hard question. Ooh, and he's dropped. So before he comes back up, I will. Yeah, and you're back. <laughs> Am I still here? What happened? Yeah, are you are you out and about or not on your home Wi-Fi? No, I tried to um, stream to my YouTube. I was, I was just pressing buttons and it. Really oh opened. yeah, it dropped. Yeah, I think you have to do but, that in the pre-show, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I it's a hard question for me because I don't really know that many foreigners. So I don't really watch a lot of them is often almost everywhere I go is mm -hmm. like majority. Like they, I have some often I'm the only foreigner there. There might be like maybe two or three yeah. foreigners there. So it's hard for me to talk about what the average foreigner in Mexico city does. <laughs> Cause I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, I was in that I was in that boat for the longest time. But due to this channel, I do have guys reach out like, "Hey, I'm in Mexico City. All right, let's go out." And I used to go out and just get a drink. I'm like, "Hey, I'll, I'll just bring you to an event, just so you can kind of see you can see a cool part of Mexico, you know, that not not a lot of people get to see." Or I have a handful of coaching clients too. So if they're if they're through town, I'm like, "Yeah, let's go out. You know, let's let, I'll, I'll introduce you to to some people." So uh, I suppose going back a bit, the main point I wanted to make is yes, you 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 it's it is absolutely imperative for you to learn Spanish, but also learn kind of some of the cultural cues. And I see this all the time in real simple one. Like if you're walking a girl down the street, she goes on the inside of the road. We used to know that in the US, that was pretty much understood until I don't know what point that changed, but a lot of guys mess that up. Or going back to the bottle thing, went out with a couple buddies and uh, you know they were ordering stuff other than the bottle, but they were bringing girls to the table. And then at the end of the night, this always happens. Um, Hey, hey, you know, you, you know, you're gonna pitch in for your part of the bottle. Oh, yeah, well, I didn't really drink that much. Like, yeah, but you invited like 15 girls to the table who, who, who went through the booze. So, oh yeah, yeah, but oh, I, I didn't hook up with any of them. I was like, well, no, but like the guys here always pay, and then the girls you invite. I mean, those are little cultural things that a lot of foreigners don't get. And for me, having been down here so long, it's really annoying having to explain that to them or them just not getting it or get this idea. Well, no, it should be 50-50. I'm like, okay, yeah, go ahead and try that in Mexico and then see how your dating life goes. They're going to look at you like you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, okay, there, there we go. There's like a, a scarcity mindset is what I would call it. Like Americans often have a mm -hmm. scarcity mindset when it comes to a lot of like dating aspects and, you know, just the, the cultural norms in America have kind of gotten into the, the feminist ideas, whatever you want to call it, yeah. where people want to, you know, split the bill and things like that. Yeah. Mexico is still a very like machoism would be the word you would, you could say and how they do business. So you kind of got to adjust to that. But at the same time, I also do say 
you know, learn as much about the culture as possible to allow yourself to break a lot of the rules. Because in some parts, I have an argument where I say, like, you know, foreigners should not, you know, go full Latin American because a lot of the aspects of Latin America are, are still backwards. Like the same way I'd say, like, you don't want to be constantly following narco culture or, you know, do you want to always be mm -hmm. late to everything? Like Latin America is, is just ridiculously late to any event possible. So once you learn, like, how they would typically, you know, do business and interact, then you also have the flexibility to break some of those rules. Yeah, exactly. Like, here's a good comment here. So, so regular scam cheek is doing a date, invite a girlfriend to get free food. Now, I remember when I was younger down here, that used to drive me nuts and it doesn't happen to me so much anymore, but every now and then I'll, I'll have a girl coming straight to the house or they'll hit me up late at night and she's like, Hey, you know, I want to come over. And then you go down to pick her up out of the Uber and there's a friend with her. So back in the day that used to kind of bother me. Um, now, a lot of times I'll, I'll bring the friend up and just tell him like, Hey, just want to let you know, like it's like a Tuesday night. It's not a party night, but like we can, you know, we can hang out, we can chill, we can do whatever. But now I'm at, I'm at the, the point in my development to when, when a friend gets out of the Uber, I'm like, Ooh, this is possibly a, a menage a trois type situation. Or it's happened to me recently, the girl, the, the main girl was kind of the one I was talking to is kind of dicking me around. And at one point she had to go to the bathroom. And then when she went to the bathroom, her friend just made a move on me, just pounced on me. So we actually, the friend and I kind of had this little thing going to where we had to get the original girl I was talking to out of here. So the two girls left together, the, the, the new girl, the friend who I just met that night, she said something like, Hey, you know what? To her, to her friend, the original girl, Hey, I got to go home. You know, my parents are calling me and da da da. So the two girls went together. And then the minute they dropped off the original girl, the new girl came right back and then just stayed the night with me. So, so again, going back to, yeah, you can break the rules. You have to know what the rules are first before you can start breaking them. And, and I, I'd say it's really just contact time with the culture, with the chicas, with the language. And then eventually it's kind of like improv -ing. Then, Then once you have a firm footing established there, then you can kind of start to have some fun and get a little bit uh, flexible here. But yeah, I remember that 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 thing. Oh yeah, I brought my friend, which used to bug me. Now it's like, no, that's cool. You know, the, the more the merrier. We can have a, a grand old time, all of us. Yep, yep. Fun rides. <laughs> here, let's see. Yeah, so oh, we already saw this one. Yeah, they try to pull that same in Colombia. Yeah, I yeah, know Colombia. Colombia is one of those ones too where um, I'll meet Colombian girls around here. And I, 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 in fact, half the girls I date aren't even Mexican; they're from other Latin countries. But the Colombian ones, you always kind of have to have in the back of your head that uh, there might be an agenda that at some point she might try to charge you, and it can be you can be dating the girl for months, and then she'll say something like, "Well, you don't give me any gifts," or "Oh, you don't you don't do anything for me." I was like, "What are you talking about? <laughs> I take you out all the, all the damn time," and then it. At that point, you realize, okay, she might be that that kind of classic girl, and then you you can choose what to do there. Either put her on the back burner, or just cut her off completely. A lot of times, I just cut them off completely because they'll then they'll move on to the next guy. Um, I've actually never uh, experienced that aspect of like a girl trying to pop up and bring a friend, but I've I've got like a whole you know plan of action to keep me mm -hmm. in the best standing, I guess, where it just hasn't ever happened to me. Yeah, for me, it's happened really rarely. I think, I think it's happened like twice in the last year, and, and a lot of times, most of the time, they will ask to like, "Hey, you know, we're just getting out of a getting out of an on throw. There's not much going on. Can I can me and a girlfriend come over?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm not doing much. Yeah, come on over. Just want to let you know. I'm like, I'm not gonna like party party or anything, but we can all hang out." And again, in the very rare instance it does happen, then usually you can kind of set something cool up there. So I'll just I'll just say that. Um, What's this? Venezuelan women are so beautiful, but are the absolute worst as far as hypergamy and being interesada. Yeah, the, the Venezuelan girls, I date a lot of Venezuelan girls. A lot, a lot of them are kind of nuts. They're, they're really cool. They, a lot of them think like Americans, and especially because they're expats or people that left their country because of the whole socialism thing. So a lot of them are really based. But it seems like the ones I date, they, they always smoke – they always smoke weed, which is cool. You know, I, I do too sometimes, but they smoke copious amounts of weed, ridiculous amounts of weed to where like, I don't even understand how they can still function at that point. Just sucking down joint after joint. A lot of them. Yeah, they do uh, have kind of the fiery attitudes the, the Colombian ones are always really sweet, but that, that's where they'll get you uh, more, me more. And, uh, they'll, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll eventually at some point, it seems like they might try to pull that angle. So you got, you got to have that in the back of your head in terms of them trying to get something more out of the relationship. Let's see. You know, I'm, I'm relatively straight edge in that area where I like barely smoke weed. I barely do drugs. Half the time I don't even, don't even drink. Like I might have a, a beer or two here, 
but it's still the necessity to have the bottle in the vicinity. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that, well, that's a big one too. Again, a lot, a lot of gringos I, I invite out with me. They're, they're, a lot of them are on the cheap side. So I, I think that makes sense what you said. A lot of the guys are doing the passport bro thing. They do have limited income or low income. So Mexico or most countries for that sake, if you're getting into the nicer places or going to the more happening places, uh, it's yes, it's cheap compared to home, but it's not cheap compared to here. So um, I, I'll, get, I'll yeah. get guys. So like, hey, you know, you're part of the bottle and it's 150 bucks, two bucks. Okay, we had three bottles. I think this last weekend, I think the bill came out to like $600, but we had three or four bottles and people were ordering food. So that's never fun having to collect on the, on the bill there. But some of the some of the guys like, oh, yeah, I don't know, man, 100, 150 bucks. I'm like, dude, you go to a dive bar in anywhere in the US and just drink shit beer. You're, you're going to probably rack up at least a $100 tab. Now, okay, it's 150 exactly, bucks, but, yeah. you, but you have you have girls just coming in and out of the table. I was like, bro, I've seen you. I saw you make out three different chicks. I saw you dance with girls. Like, if you do it right, you should be able to hook up with at least one or two in the next five days. So, like, what w- what's the deal? Like, you'd spend a lot more back home if you went out with your buddies. So, for me, because I, I used to fall into that camp, too, like kind of on the cheap side. They used to call it a goldo down here. Uh, don't, don't, don't do that. You know, you're, you're creating or you're facilitating an environment of fun and you, you want to be that person to where like, Hey, this guy's always, whenever I hang out with this guy, he's always having a good time. He's in a good mood. And especially for the girls here, because guess what? That's the culture. And if you're trying to charge girls for their, their liquor or have that standoffish attitude, that's fine. They'll just, they'll just come to my table or they'll just hang out with bow tie. Yeah. Like, that's, that's completely fine. You guys can do that. The, the more you screw up, the, the more I capitalize. The other, I think we might have talked about this. The funny one was like, anytime we're going to any sort of venue, like, I don't want the bottle necessarily because I want to drink, but I want the mm-hmm. table because at some point I want to sit down and I'm not trying to sit. Yes, down. I'm, not trying to be I'm the same way. Like, oh, I want to go somewhere and sit, like, you know, a couple hours in to the party, like, I need to sit down and I'm not trying to stand around everybody else. I always say, yeah, I'm not a big partier. Um, you know, I go to a lot of parties, but I'm not a big partier. Um, I always say I'm, I'm hardcore chill. So eventually I like to sit down at the table. Usually this is one to a lot of guys that they'll go out and be like, oh, girls, girls, girls. We got to meet a ton of girls here. I got to the point in my social game development where I, I take girls with me. Um, there, There is an addendum to that, though. My girls that are into the uh they're into girls too those are the girls i take with me because then that's really fun they can go out and bring other girls to the table and mingle on my behalf and then it's almost like if you ever worked in a corporate environment like marketing or sales and you go to a trade show and you usually have like the the bdrs sdrs or sales guys at the booth and me as a marketer i'll go out and just kind of pull people to the booth it's kind of like that to where your, your girls will go and make those social connections and introductions for you and then you just have to man down the table or maybe eventually migrate to other tables to where they're just setting you up with new social opportunities, which is fantastic. I, I wish I had understood that a lot earlier in my life. I mean, in college, I should have done yeah. it. I remember in co- college going out, rolling out with a group full of bros and then like, all right, again, clutching the beard of the chest. Girls, 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 got to find girls. Let's do the round. Guess what? Every girl can see you in there doing the round. But when you're a guy at a table with, you know, I think it was like me, you, and then another guy. And then we had at one point like 15 girls at the table. I don't have to do a round. I mean, people just come to the table. They see something happening there and they they at least get a little degree of FOMO to where like, hey, what's going on? Who's this guy? What's his story? Okay. Like he seems to be likable, seems to be popular. He's in good shape. He's having a good time. Everyone, yeah, all the who's who's who. Who's gringo with the shirt off you? <laughs> yeah, yeah with, with, you know, with the pink hat and the light up earrings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was peacocking hard on Saturday. But it's also too, the more you get embedded in the groups, um, and I know I met a lot of these guys, I think through you, eventually you brought me into these because you're more on the production side, of a lot of these events. But now, you know, like the, the DJs have spent the night at my house. I've hung out with the organizers, the promoters, um, some of the the higher tier girls, like the telenovela actresses that are there, you know, we're, we're dating those girls now. So that definitely helps too. really just getting your foot into a social circle, more of kind of a higher class, closed social circle. And then within that ecosystem, starting to make your way up the ranks. I've found that that's been more yeah, than beneficial for my game i don't even have to, easy yeah i don't have yeah, to use yeah. dating, dating apps anymore they just find you like you make a presence <laughs> yeah, and people just... are curious who is this guy yeah they see the the random guy that doesn't look like everybody else and then yeah of course, like you said all the different telenovela actors and stuff like that people that just meet us in general and then you get to a party and somebody sees you talking to somebody like that now people are more curious and then now more of the girls come because they're like that's competition this guy's somehow met some Instagram person I also follow. 
they're mm-hmm. more curious about that. So half the time, you know, I'd, I'd just put out the invite and invite, you know, 10 chicks to the party, 15 chicks to the party, see who shows up. Of course, it's Mexico, you know, people are going to be flaky. So maybe half of them actually show up. Yep. But that's that's still like, you know, four or five girls with their two, three friends. Well, I, point, I don't meet the apps anymore. I saw you doing that. I think even God, even like a, I've known you for a bit now, like a year or two years ago to where um, you would post on the story like, hey, this event, you know, six free entrances. I think I'm going to start doing that, too. So I, so when I like I was I, I always reserve a table now because. I, and I've priced it out too at these events. If I go by myself and I just pay by the drinks individually, then it ends up costing more than just one bottle. So, um, so I always do the table game now. I always bring multiple girls with me now, and usually I just tell the promoters, "Hey, uh, give me you know five or six yep. entrances. I'll pay for them, and then and then just put that da- put down a name. And like you said, half the girls flake, and then I'll just tell another girl. You know, you, you'll get texts on a Saturday night. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm at this event. Swing on through." Tell tell them yourself. So, you tell them you're with me on behalf of so and so, and this is your name. And they'll they'll always let them in. If there's any problems, you just, you just text the, the manager. I actually I don't get the t- tickets. Like when I post and say I've got X amount of tickets, I only do that to create a sense of urgency. Like I might say I've got gotcha, you know, two yeah. tickets left because I know that if there's two left, it'll create the urgency, and you know four or five girls will message me, and then I'll use that basis to actually yep. go to the promoter, or go to the, the venue host, and, and figure out what I need. And sometimes they'll say like, hey, well, you know, you've also got, if you've got your ticket, so you can bring three girls for free. Or, you know, if, if you can promote X, Y, Z, we'll just give you a couple extra free entries. So one of the girls uh, that came uh, last Saturday had like 200, 300,000 followers on Instagram. And the promoter gave her and her sister like a free bottle or something like that. And I was, I was <laughs> slightly upset. I was like, they gave the girls a bottle, they didn't <laughs> offer it to me. <laughs> But they, of course, you know, sometimes the, the venues want the promotion from that Instagram girl that's got 200,000 followers. Even though I invited them, I didn't get anything free out of it. <laughs> but it oh, makes yeah. me look good. I'm the, I'm the same makes, exact makes way. Us yeah. look good to the, makes us look good to the promoter because now the promoter is like, okay, I can trust this guy to actually show people. Yeah, I, I think I'm getting to that point too now that I'm bringing multiple girls. And, and every now and then, a, a lot of times, like I'll, I'll meet girls out in my real life. I don't even really know until I get their Instagram that there's someone. I was talking to a girl at the gym today. Like I've seen her, she's a new face in the gym. I've seen her all week and she just keeps staring me up and down. And at one point today, she came, there's no one there. I go do, I go doing during low hours. She came and she like had her phone out. She, she, took, she took her earphones out or her AirPods out, had her form, phone out, came and like stood right next to me and just kind of bumped in my shoulder. I kind of looked at her. I was like, I was like, hey, hey, you. I was like, I think I know you. I don't think I've seen you around here, but I've seen you around before. You know, where do I know you? And we were trying to already oh, know so and so and da 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 and kind of you know flirted a little bit and then got her info. And then when I followed her, realized that I think she's got like sixty five k followers or something. She's like a fashion model or something like that. That's been most of my experiences lately. I'd say this this last summertime, um, I live in Polanco, so I date a lot of girls here in Polanco. They're from like good families you know you come down here you're, you're a gringo thinking oh yeah the geo arbitrage you know I, i'm gonna be so rich down here no <laughs> no not really you date some of these polanco girls like ooh, yeah. ooh, they got some money in this area so it's nice when you can start again stepping into that class and a lot of people i mention it on this channel all the time we do have it to a degree in the u.s i suppose maybe more so if you come from old money but the the, the social class thing is so huge down here so that goes back to the point of don't speak low level Spanish. Don't speak like a fucking ghetto cholo thug or anything like that, because you're just going to close yourself out to those higher class people. And that's fine. If you yeah. want to have that experience, that's great. But uh, it's much more interesting when you, when you get hobnobbing with the movers and shakers of the society. So I got a DM from uh, Twitter to talk about the prices of Mexico. So both of us have been here for a couple of years now. And, I, and you, mm-hmm. know, you were here back in the, the 1960s the and whatnot. <laughs> so yeah. like, as as we've gone, like the economy in Mexico has gotten much stronger. Like the peso has gotten stronger. They only recently lowered the interest rate from 11.25 to 11, like this week. But the peso, like around when we were here, was or early in those days, was like 20, sometimes 20 to 1. And now it's down to like 16.8 or something like that. It was 22 to 1. Or? It was 22 yeah, to 1 when I moved into my apartment. I'm paying, I was paying 22,000 pesos a month for rent. So it was $1,000. That was my budget. Um, 
They do do the cost of living adjustments every year. So when I renewed the lease, it's now 23,000 pesos, but now I'm paying 13 to $1,400 a month. It's still a good deal for I live. I have a be beautiful view and big open studio space. I'm going to redid the living room this last, this last week to where I'm gonna start doing like some live music recording here. So still a very good deal compared to anything I was paying in California for anything remotely close. But yeah, yeah, I feel it from a thousand dollars a month to $1,400 a month for rent me doing nothing yeah. different, but still, I'm still yeah, taking I'm, advantage of the geo arbitrage. I've been telling people all the time. It's like, you know, Mexico city at least is not a budget place to come so it kind of excludes a lot of the really budget travelers but I also say like if you are interested so i'll do consulting for people that want to get residency in mexico or you know want to move down to mexico also mm -hmm. and i always say like don't come with no solid stream of income uh, no you know, you, i warn guys all fired. the time yeah some a lot of people have gotten fired while they're down here and they end up moving back or like they're really in the crunch but if, if you're planning to just come and think like I'll live off of savings, you have no idea where the exchange rate is going to go. If you've got, you know, like one sole source of income, if that income stream disappears, you're, you're back to square run. You got to leave again. So oh, if, we, if, we've had like, that happen. Find some but way, I had runway. Yeah. Find, in terms find of some way to have some like consistent income. Or if you're, if you're going to do savings, like have a very large padding of savings. Because, yeah. yeah, in that situation where you show up and it's 22 to a, a dollar peso rate, and then, you know, three years later, it's down to 16 pesos to a dollar, your, your budgeting is now off. Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not really feeling the, the crunch because I planned ahead of this and, like, yeah. live well under my means. But, like, I can understand it. If I was in a different situation, taking that hit of, you know, 25% off the top for everything is a lot. There's, there's been much fewer gringos that I've noticed coming to Mexico City. A lot yeah. of people have left. I mean, I'm sure like in the, the, the uh, Condesa, like Parque Mexico area, people don't really notice it. But outside well, of that, I've a lot of them are a, drop a lot of them are tourists people. now, too. Yeah. You don't get a lot of passport bros coming through like, oh, I'm going to come through and hook up. And then and then, and then you realize, too, in Mexico City, there, someone mentioned in the, in the chat that there is a lot of money here. So if you're if you're some, from some podunk town, middle of nowhere, U.S., and you don't really have any game back home, I get shit all the time when I put these shorts out there. If you don't have game back home, and you come to Mexico City and you think that you're going to be considered high class. Well, you've got another thing coming for you, buddy, because there is yeah, some money in this city. It is the New York of the Spanish speaking world in, in the Americas. So. Treated as yeah, such, like, was, can you go to New York and have success? No, then don't, why do you think you can come here and do so? I made a joke that it's like, yeah, like I am the the one percent income that's holding the government from Mexico, but then my neighbors come to me the other a couple of weeks ago and say like, hey, we're going to Boston for a, a basketball game. Do you want to come? And I'm like, I'm no. not in the income class to just take an international flight and buy tickets to a professional base for a basketball game. Like me being well off in Mexico, there's people that are well, well off in Mexico that make me feel like I was like, oh, shit, I guess I got to get my shit together again. Oh, I remember my first girlfriend in Guadalajara, I went to her house and I came down there like, oh, I'm, I'm American. You know, I'm have a lot of money. She had an elevator in her house. She had not. I mean, most people have cleaning ladies. I have a cleaning lady, but she had like a full live in staff and her dad had multiple exotic cars. And I was like, wow, I've never really seen this kind of wealth before. No. Now, after that experience, yeah, I, I, lived in, I lived in California and worked in finance for years. So, yeah, you see that kind of wealth. But a lot of those people are insolvent, too. But down here, there's like 500 years of generational wealth in some of these areas and these these nice neighborhoods and yeah you don't hold the yeah, candle for the girl that i noticed she was taking a trip to dubai and i was like oh like, yeah you sure that is your gift to the to buy she's like oh no it's my dad he's he's doing it for me and i'd made a joke saying like well i, I want to meet your dad like, that sounds like an interesting guy like what does he do and she was like well do you know anything about soccer and i'm kind of like not really and she's like well my dad's not going to want to meet you and i thought that she was kind of like playing me at the same time but it turns out uh, that her dad was like part of the soccer team and, he, and she was legit like well if you if you don't know anything about soccer like my dad being part of owner of a soccer team you're gonna have nothing in common and he's probably just gonna get upset that i brought you around <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've dated girls, um, again, a lot from other Latin countries, but one, like her dad is like a very prominent public figure, you know, military figure now getting into politics. He sent he sent his daughters here to Mexico City because things are going to get sketched in their home country here very quickly. Met a girl to where her dad is like a producer for, again, another Latin uh country spanish speaking country her dad's a, a producer for films in that country and she just hangs out here in mexico city because they're, they're, they're rich kids you know and like and they they date guys like me so that's that's always really fun i've had a i've had a sugar mama every now and then um peruvian girl and my birthday's coming up here invited me to los cabos so all expenses paid 
for my birthday. Not not, not now with work stuff. I'm not sure if I want to go or if I want to babysit her and her friends. But that that stuff starts to happen to where yeah, you get these girls that you'll joke with them. I do the same thing too. Oh, you have a sugar daddy? I'm like no, like I'm wealthy, but I'll pay for you. I'm like all right, yeah, cool, let's do that. So. Um, we, we are coming up about on the hour. I was going to ask you if you had anything else you wanted to maybe bring up, maybe something we failed to mention. And if not, let people know where they can find you, what you got going on. And I'll, I'll sign off. Say the last, last question topic is, uh, yeah. what are your thoughts on the green go, go home movement? Oh, I posted a TikTok a few weeks ago, just talking about like, hey, Mexico City has pretty terrible traffic, like any big city. Uh, so if you plan on getting somewhere on time, make sure you you out you you allocate some buffer um, for your for your commute times because you know you get hung up in traffic here. I got three hundred plus racist comments of Gringo, go home, you know, get, get out of here. We don't want you here. And I'm like, oh, okay. I I, I thought that was. I thought they were trolling me. I thought I didn't realize people actually think that because I think it's really funny. We have so many Mexican immigrants in the U S to where a couple gringos here and there in Mexico. I mean, it's, it's literally just laughable. So um, when you get those comments, it's like, it's like when people say rac racist comments in the U S just realize they're low intelligence, they're low IQ. They're people that you really don't shouldn't give a fuck about hanging out with or whether they like you or not, that they're the losers of society. So there are like anywhere in the world, I always have to, um, I always have to add that comment, like anywhere in the world. Yeah. There, there's a lot of losers here too. There's a lot of people that think that all of their problems are because of the gringos that live in Mexico city. I was like, no, you'd still be a loser. If you lived in the U S you'd be a loser. If you lived in another country, that's just you having a loser mindset. But yeah, it's funny. You yeah, ask yeah. my, my best TikTok videos are like gringo go home. And I lean into the hate. I'm like, oh my God. Yes. Because that account's growing very quickly. Yeah. I used, I wrote an article about this kind of like a long I almost say an expose, I guess you could say, where I said that if you kind of look in depth, the entire Gringo Go Home movement is is run by like the middle and upper middle class. And it seems yeah. like they would be the ones that shouldn't care the most. Like the people that are in the city that are just working, that are like the worker bees, could care less. It's it's mainly the people that like as the the trend of the last five hundred years where a certain class of Mexicans has always been on top, they have had to do relatively no work to stay on top. Now there's a growing class of either both foreigners and Mexicans from the lower classes slowly coming up. It's like threatening mm -hmm. their way of life as that upper middle class person. So when you go to, you say like Parque Mexico and you see signs that say gringo go home, they're all in English. It's like a dude that's making 10,000 pesos a month is not traveling from Ecatepec to Parque Mexico to tell people to leave their area. Exactly. Like that's, somebody yeah. that live, that's somebody that lives in that area. It's, and it's, it's not that gringos are causing the prices to go up. It's that there's a large upper middle class and even, you know, wealthy class of Mexicans that also wants to live in Polanco, Condesa, et cetera. And they're also battling with each other for the best property. But Americans or gringos, foreigners become the scapegoats just the same as Mexicans become the scapegoats in the States. Nobody's taking your jobs. Yeah. You don't want to do that job. It's like nobody's, you know, taking your livelihood. You've had the country unbanked, like 60% of the country has been unbanked for the last 500 years. Somebody is now trying to create finance institutions. And that's what you're afraid of is letting the lower class finally get up to where you've been. Yeah. And, the, and I think it goes back to, I think you nailed it on the head. It is a very classist society here. A lot of guys don't realize that. Again, we do have somewhat of a caste or class system in the US. I'd say it's less defined, but when you come down here and live for a bit, you see it, it's abundantly clear that there's a class system here. And I think it really just does, does come down to classism. Um, and, and it's funny because I'll post a video on TikTok and get a ton, ton of hate, but I've never had a single person in public come up and give me any gruff. I mean, everyone's just yeah, so nice, yeah. so friendly, so hospitable. So it's the same thing back when I used to do like red pill manosphere type content. I'd get a bunch of losers in the comments. Like it's never anyone that you, you, you actually care what they think. You know, most of the time, um, this isn't a stab at you, but most of the time they don't have their real face out there. They don't have their real name. It's like, okay, well, I don't, I don't really care what you think then. Um, people, now people that I think are cool. I've noticed that around here, when I see a guy, I'm like, oh, that guy's in good shape. Oh, he's got some stuff going on. Who is that person? Those people are usually mutually interested in meeting me too. So if it's some peripheral NPC background character, I could really give a fuck less what they think. So I, I think that was a exactly. fantastic last point to, to bring up. Um, guys, yeah, make sure you follow Bowtide there on. It looks like you're at X at Bowtide Passport. 
You can also follow me, Instagram at Jaron Scott. Um, I also have a branded account too. So it's Instagram at Gringo Guides. That's really just clips and reels and memes and stuff that kind of tie into these topics. But if you want to get in touch with me personally, if you're coming through Mexico City, need help on you know being a gringo living down here, uh, much like Bowtie, I, I help people get residencies, learn the language, get set up. Um, for those who have been following my channel for a while, um, the fat to fit topics, I still help guys on losing substantial amounts of weight, optimizing hormones, fitness, genetics, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, some of the dating stuff too. Um, Bowtie also does very well down here. I do extremely well. I don't even really think about it anymore. That's that's an area of my life I developed years ago, but you know, still the the dividends are still being paid out uh, in the in the dating aspect. So, um, Bowtie, yeah. do you have anything else? Uh, yeah, I'll say I'm, I'm, I have no Facebook. I mean, I, I have Facebook probably just because Instagram is connected to it. I rarely use Instagram. My main areas are, yeah, Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, Bowtie Passport, and then my website, bowtiepassport.io. And, and there I write about everything from culture topics to Mexico, you know, travel topics to Mexico, but also the dating aspect topics of Mexico. So I have a, a guide on uh, in, Instagram, like how to leverage Instagram, social media, social circles versus just using the dating apps. Best way to just find that is, you know, bowtiepassport.io. All righty, guys. Not as much just yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I know. I, I Years ago when I started putting myself out there, I was anonymous too on my previous website. And I was like, you know what? I'll just put my face out there, which did get me in trouble uh, career-wise for a little bit. So I went through, archived a bunch of videos on the channel. Really, I'm taking my brand in a new direction. But I got to the point where like, if I can't say it publicly, then maybe I need to rethink my belief system. I should be able to just own who I am and put myself out there and not have it any have any impact on my dating life, uh, you know, family, professional life or anything like that. You know, just try to align all these things so that that's been working, working out for me. But th th there are a lot of guys in these types of spaces where you do have to remain anonymous. I, I know your situation and, and understand why. So um, that being said, guys, I do also manage a community of like-minded men looking to level up in all areas of love and life by building lives worth living and loving. This show is actually a lead in to our weekly calls. So if you are interested on just getting a taste of that, um, we're behind a paywall. So we get to talk about a lot more titillating topics that are not safe for the YouTubes or the algorithm, as I saw uh, Mr. Marcos Pena mentioned in the chat there. So if you're interested in that, um, you can sign up for the group menofnow.us. They do give you a, a free seven-day trial there. Um, right the minute I get off of this, we're going to go on our weekly call. That is post paywall. That is very private. It is anonymous. We do not record those. So if you have any sort of questions, more in-depth stuff that uh, you would like to present to where we respect your anonymity, then that is a place to do so. Menofnow.us or just hit me up on Instagram at Jaron Scott. I'll shoot the link. You can get in there, kind of get your feet wet, give it a feel. And then uh, if you want to want to continue on, then we'd love to have you. And if not, then uh, you know we shall part ways. So that being said, I do want to thank my esteemed guest and good friend. I managed to not screw up and say your real name. Sometimes that it's hard in my head because I know you as a, as a certain name. But I think my, I think minus the face, it's like, okay, I'm just talking to an avatar. So my, my esteemed yep. guest, Bo Tide, and my, my good friend, whose name shall remain unmentioned. Uh, I want to thank you for stopping on by. And guys, let me, uh, course, let me know course. if you have any Questions, comments, Instagram, uh, leave comments down there in the video, like, subscribe, share, recommend this content to anyone else. And until next time, I shall bid you all farewell. See you guys on the